Let's go to Psalms chapter 105 today. Psalms chapter 105 today. We're talking about Joseph. One of my favorite characters. Everyone say Joseph. Joseph's name means he will add. Every name has a meaning. In the Hebrew, Joseph's name means he will add. He was the 11th son of Jacob. In the, in the context of Genesis chapter 32, when Jacob is crossing over, he has his 11 sons and all of his stuff, and he fights the angel. You've heard the story. Maybe you know the story. Maybe you don't. He fights with the angel of the Lord in the dark and wrestles, and the angel touches his hip socket, and he walks with a limp as a result, and he says, I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to stop the wrestle. I'm not going to stop the fight until you bless me. I'm not going to stop this, this war until I get something from it. That's always an encouragement to me because when you're in your darkest, hardest season, there is a blessing in every dark, hard season. But if you give up the wrestle prematurely, you miss the blessing and the reward of that dark, hard season. So Jacob or Joseph said, or Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And, and this context was the first time we see the number 11 mentioned, speaking of the 11th son. And we talked about this, that we are in a season right now of John 11, 11. If you haven't heard the message around uh, the 11th hour, I'd encourage you to go back and several weeks ago and listen to it, because I believe that 11 is a very significant number. 11, 11 is a very significant number in this, in this season for us as a national body of Christ, a national church, but as a local as well, as a local expression. And Joseph was the 11th son. He was the son that went from, you know, a 17-year-old dreamer boy, betrayed by his brothers, thrown into a pit, thrown into slavery, rose to fame, and then was accused, falsely accused and put in jail. And then rose back up to fame and became basically in charge of all of Egypt, second to Pharaoh. He's, a, he's, he's, he's the epitome of a story of kind of like rags to riches in a lot of ways. He is the epitome of a story of somebody that learned, like his dad, to fight with God and prevail. To fight with God and win. So here the psalmist writes a, a sort of a reflection of this story of Joseph in Psalms chapter 105. Let's go there, verses 8 to 22. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this to you. Speaking of God, he remembers his covenant forever. The promises that he's made to you, he remembers. Interesting, what we just read in Genesis chapter 17, right? God remembers his covenant to Abraham. Like, God's up there right now watching what's going on. He's not surprised. He's like, it's my covenant. It's my, it's my, it's my people's land. We can argue all day long. We can go through the natural history, but you can't argue God. Argue all you want, all the logistics. Argue all you want, all of the things you hear on the news. Argue all, but you can't argue God, the creator. This was a covenant that he made with Abraham, and it had to do with land, and it had to do with his descendants. We are grafted in, and we are part of that descendant element now. Because of the Jews' rejection of Jesus, the Jewish people are like our half-brothers in the spirit. They miss the Jesus part, but they're family. We've been grafted into the vine because of their rejection. We are considered Gentile believers, not Jewish believers. Gentile believers. We might have some Jewish believers in here. But it says, he remembers his covenant forever. Listen to this. The word which he commanded for a thousand generations. This was the promise. Like, thousand generations. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your descendants. Verse 9, he references the covenant which he made with Abraham. The covenant which he made with Abraham. And his oath to Isaac. And his oath to Isaac. Isaac was the promised son. We have Ishmael which is actually the physical and spiritual sort of personable icon that represents all of Islam. Ishmael was the slave-born child. If you know the story, Abraham and Sarah couldn't get pregnant. Sarah was like, sleep with my servant, Hagar. Ishmael was born. Ishmael was born of works. What does works represent? Religion. 
Jesus did not come to establish a religion. He came to establish and break the chains of religion so we can have relationship. We have religion, we have works, which rep is represented in the person of Ishmael and all of his descendants, and we have righteousness, the works of righteousness, life-giving spirit, relationship represented in the person of Isaac. Now, this is a whole, that's a whole teaching in and of itself. I'm not going to go there. The covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath to Isaac, verse 10, and, it, and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. It's funny, I, I actually originally wasn't going to share the whole thing I shared about Israel this morning, but I was going to share this passage, and it's a direct reference to all, of I, all that I just shared. Verse 11, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as an allotment, as the allotment of your inheritance. It's their inheritance. H how many would not want to fight for their inheritance, by the way? How many would not want to, if somebody came into your home and that was an inheritance given to you, they came into your home and tried to take your home, what would you do? You would wrestle for your inheritance. People that understand this understand what's really happening in the world right now in Israel. People that understand this concept understand what's really happening. Verse 12, when they were few in number, indeed very few, and strangers in it, when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sake, saying, do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets no harm. Verse 16, watch this. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. This is in all of Egypt, okay? He destroyed all the provision of bread. Verse 17, but... He sent a man before them named Joseph, who we're talking about. He sent a man before them named Joseph, who was sold as a slave. Sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. They bound him because he was in prison. He was laid in irons, which is the, really the prison reference, verse 19, until the time that his word, everyone say word. Okay, that word could also be translated as dreams. In the time, until the time that is dreams. Anybody have dreams in here? You have a vision. You have a purpose in life. You have a goal in life. You know you're destined for more. You know you're created for more. You know, you know that there's something on the other side of what you are currently living in right now. You know that you were created for great purpose. Well, Joseph had a knowledge of this. Joseph had a dream. He had a phys an actual, he had two dreams. As a 17-year-old kid, he had two very powerful dreams. And this is the reference to that. Until, it says here, until, I've always loved this verse, until the time that his dreams or that God's word or the word that he got from God came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Very powerful statement right there. If you feel like you have a purpose in life and a vision in life and a great destiny in life at some level, in some capacity, maybe that, it's, it's, you, you think, when I say that, some of you are like, well, oh, I don't really have a big vision, you know, but even if that vision is to be an amazing grandmother, that's, you feel like God's called you to be that or grandfather, like, you don't, don't think of it like this, I'm going to become the CEO of what, like, or I'm going to become the next, you know, Fortune 500 list company. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. That may be something in your, in, in, in your, in, in your world. But I'm talking about anything that you feel like God has spoken to you to be or become, know that that word will test you like it did. The word of the Lord says here, it tested Joseph. The word of the Lord, when he gives you a word, he, that word tests you. That word actually will initiate you going into a season. Let me give you an example, okay? This is an amazing example. Because, you know, back in the day, when we were five times the size of what we are right now as a church body, the, the, I re, this would always happen. People would come into the, the church, they would tell me, I feel called to be here. I have a word to be here. And at the beginning, I really believed them. But then I started seeing, you know, People kind of come in and out, come in and out. And I started noticing a pattern. Every time it got real and they moved from just being a consumer to a contributor, often sometimes there would be opportunity for offense. 
And when that offense would come in, they would now compromise the word. But let me just tell you, if you have a word you're called to be somewhere, that word will test you. In fact, God will allow you to get offended because you, you, you may say in your job, you're like, okay, I'm called to work at this job. Like, I'm called, this is the job of my dreams. And you get there, and the first three months are great honeymoon stage. You're like smooching all the people. You know, you're, you're kissing all kinds of butts, metaphorically speaking, sorry. You know, get, getting in all the right rooms, getting the promotion, and all of a sudden, boom, management changes. You don't like your coworkers. All of a sudden, now your word of being in that room or in that job is challenged. You don't like your job now. You've, you've moved through the honeymoon stage, and now you're just like, that person offended me. That person said this about me. That manager didn't recognize me, didn't validate me, told me that my project that I did or whatever wasn't good, wasn't sufficient. I'm going to go somewhere else. When you do that, you create a repeated pattern in your life that ends up shackling you down the road. A pattern of inconsistency and a, a pattern of an inability to push through and persevere when it's hard. If you've been called somewhere or to something, you will live in a contradictory season for a very long time. That contradictory season screams at you, quit. Screams at you, maybe you should question the word that you had getting into the season. That contradictory season screams at you confusion and fear and give in and give up. And is it worth it? How many you know what I'm talking about? Just get into a relationship. Get into have a friendship. Like, like, like have any sort of job for longer than two years. Guarantee you have an opportunity to peace, to leave. Be in a church for longer than five years very hard for people to find family and to be in family takes a lot of grit a lot of perseverance a lot of reminding yourself that God if you called me if you led me to this you're gonna allow me to be led through this because you're not up there surprised God is never surprised with your struggle you know that it's, a, it's like a, the most amazing thing to think about. He's never surprised with your struggle. He's not up there like, it's like dang, I didn't know that was going to happen. He's, shoot, man. I, he doesn't have what he needs to overcome that. Shoot. I should have thought about that one. Now, he knows your struggle before you're going to have the struggle. And in the struggle, there is a hidden package called strength. It takes a mature person to unwrap that hidden package in every struggle. It takes a mature person to search through the struggle, and find the light at the end of the tunnel. It takes a really mature person to do that. It takes an immature person to live in the struggle and without even trying, find a new, find the exit, find a new season, find a new job, do the new thing. Didn't work out. Last one didn't work out, so I'll do a new thing. So back to the verse here in ver chapter, uh, chapter 105. Verse 19, until the time that his word dreams came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. Verse 20, the king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. So that's speaking of now the king. He's in jail. And I'm going to give you a little bit more of the timelines in a second. But he's in jail. He's falsely accused. He's in prison. And at an appointed time, an appointed time, over two years went by. He's in jail. He became the manager of the jail. The king sent to release him, and now he's leading the whole land. He's in charge. He's second to Pharaoh. Just shows you you can go from a pit to a palace. You can go from a prison into your purpose very quickly, very quickly, in a moment because of your faithfulness. The thing about Joseph that was so amazing was that everywhere he went, it says he found favor with God. You know why he found favor with God? Because he stewarded even the darkest moments in his life. It's like, while I'm in the prison, falsely accused, I'm not going to wallow in my pity. I'm not going to wallow in shame. I'm going to manage the prison. What about right now in the season of your life? If you're in the darkest season, the hardest season of your life, what if you just decided, made a decision? Made a decision today. I'm going to dominate the dark season. We want to dominate the good season. But what about dominating the dark season? What about actually being the light in your own darkness? 
What about actually relying on the light when you have no, no way out, the light who is Jesus Christ, while you're in darkness? What have you made a decision today? I'm not going to let the news, the trauma of the world, the trauma of my past any longer dominate me. I'm going to dominate in and I'm going to win in my struggle. I'm going to find the hidden package of strength in the dark struggle that I'm living right now. You're just one decision away from the greatest breakthrough that you've ever had in your life. One decision away. One little step in the right direction and your whole trajectory can change. It's happened to Joseph. You know, all Joseph did was he interpreted two dreams in a prison. But then he waited two years. Managed the prison. Stewarded the darkness. Became dominant in the dark. Became light in the dark. And at the appointed time, in one moment, as a surprise, the door was knocking. Guys, like, I need Joseph right now. That one moment changed everything for Joseph. The king sent and released him, the ruler of the people, let him go free. It's verse 20, verse 21. He made him lord of his house. He went from lord of the prison to lord of the house. Let me just say this. You cannot become lord of the house in the next season if you aren't lord of the darkness in the dark season. You cannot manage the next season that you want to get into for, from the promotion standpoint if you can't manage the hard one. You, want the, you think the promotion is the end goal. No, the end goal is always managing your present circumstances so well that when you get to that next season, you're ready. That's always the goal. Sometimes we seek promotion and we sacrifice the present. We cannot sacrifice the present on the altar of thinking that the promotion will make us somehow magically better. If you're not better in the dark season, in the present season, it will only be magnified in the promotion season and you'll be prematurely taken out. Don't assassinate yourself in a future season because you choose to reject what God's trying to do in correction in the current one. God is trying to correct some of you in this season. Guide some of you, guard some of you, protect some of you. You're, you're, you're pushing, you're knocking on these doors, and God's like, no, 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 uh, I'm delaying some things right now because I don't want you to assassinate yourself in the next season and prematurely be taken out. If you can't manage your household expenses right now while you're renting, it's not good for you to buy because when you buy, you might lose your house. Verse 21, he made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure, basically to lead. Now you have the ability to lead. You are in charge, boy. You are really in charge. You're, you're my second in command. I'm going to also teach his elders wisdom. I want to talk today, write this down. That was my introduction. <laughs> I want to talk today about this, this subject. Write this down in your, in your notes. Take notes. Take, take notes today. You'll remember, you'll remember this message. Mark my words. Dream delays. Write that word. Dream delays. Every one of us have dream delays. We have a dream from God. We have a purpose. We have a plan. We have a goal. And there's massive delays. How many you know what I'm talking about? Anybody in, anybody in the room this morning? Look, a delay. Trying to, God's told you this and you're trying to do it, make it happen. And there's like a delay. There's a delay. There's a delay. Abraham and Sarah had a delay. 99 years old. Sarah's eggs were dead. And then boom, they have a baby. Like, nobody wants that. I don't know about you. I'm not 99, but I don't want another kid right now. I have four. I'm good. I mean, if God gave me one, I'd be happy. I'm not complaining. But do I want to go back into baby phase? No. 99 years old. He held on to a promise. Because he knew, oh, I won't get, get there. I won't go there. Dream delays. Write this down. Dream delays. I want to talk about dealing with dream delay. I was in Edmonton this weekend, this past weekend, and, uh, you know, on the way there. How many like Air Canada? God bless Air Canada. Air Canada has had, uh, you know, ebbs and flows of awesomeness, you know. Probably more ebbs than flows. And uh, I've been with Air Canada. I'm a faithful Air Canada person because of all the perks that I get. So I'm just like, I'm just going with Air Canada all the time. Um, 
the older I get, maybe you think this is bad, and I'm, you know, I'm uh, maybe a little OCD or, or, you know, privileged, but I just don't like waiting in lines anymore. So I have points, I have privilege, I get there, I show up, priority check-in, I don't have to wait in lines, like almost ever. I get upgraded all the time, not all the time, but this past season I've been getting upgraded all the time. And uh, this past weekend I was flying and I, I had, because I had rolled over, Air Canada gave me like 85, I think it was like 82 or 85 upgrade credits. It's a lot of credits. I had rolled over from the previous year. So I've been using them a lot and, and uh, flying. And I applied for this, these two flights to Edmonton and I didn't get the upgrade because I was on a, on a wait list, didn't get, the, didn't get the upgrade. I get to the airport and um, my first flight was delayed, like majorly delayed. So, like, because your first flight's delayed, you're not going to be able to catch your next flight in Toronto. So I'm going to have to now basically scrap these two flights and book you on two brand new flights. But that means you're going to be delayed five hours getting to your destination. I was getting there five hours later than I was supposed to be getting there. So I'm like, okay, fine. I really have no choice. And so um, I, I, I book these new flights, get to my gate. The first flight was delayed again. But on the way into the gate, I get a call that my flight was upgraded. I'm like, amazing. I'm upgraded because of the delay. I'm upgraded. I wouldn't have been upgraded on the last flight, but because of the delay on the first flight of booking two brand new flights, I was upgraded. It's like, that's awesome. Praise the Lord. You know, do a little praise the Lord dance in the airport. Second flight, another delay. We're actually like, it's actually stuck on the runway. I get upgraded again to the second flight. I'm like, God, this is awesome. These delays are like setting me up for upgrades this is amazing then i get to i finally get to my destination and this has never happened and i've traveled around the world for over 21 22 years and this has only never happened and my driver who picked me up he picks me up i get there five hours later we get there and we we're driving on the highway and his car breaks down in the middle of the highway now i'm delayed getting to my hotel and getting to the event that i'm a part of in edmonton we're literally parked like it just dies in the middle of the highway. Like there's just dies, like just dead, like neutral. We're slowly have enough gas to turn onto the side of the road. Busy highway. So now we're sitting there. I'm delayed again. I'm like, God, what's up with these delays today? Like getting to Edmond was, was just so complicated. So now I have to call an Uber and take all of my bags out of the vehicle, cross the, the sketchy highway ravine with all my bags, like all my bags, to a sketchy Uber. Like, I didn't, I didn't, first of all, I didn't even, it was like a dirt road in the side crossing a ravine. An Uber has to drive. I don't think he even understood, like, why he was doing that. So he comes up. I get into the Uber. I get to my hotel. I get to my hotel, majorly delayed, and the person's like, hey, just so you know, we've decided to upgrade your room. I'm like, wow. And I felt, after the third time, after the third upgrade, I felt the Lord speak to me. And he said this so clear to me. He said, Sean, your delays are my upgrades. And that sometimes in life, there are real deal delays so that God can upgrade you in the current season that you are in. And if sometimes, I mean, we don't, we, no one likes delay, but I like redemption. And I know a lot of, I mean, I would say 70% of some of the greatest rewards or, or, or not, I don't want to say rewards, 70% of some of the financial remuneration has happened in my life when I've had to fight something in a delay and hardly knows what I'm talking about. You know, you get, you know, you have a, a bad meal, there's a delay in your food service, right? You talk to the manager, they give you the free food. I can tell you like thousands of stories where I've got free hotels, free cars, you know, all kinds of stuff because of someone else's fault, someone else's delay. There are upgrades in the delays that we face in life. And I want to share three things that delays do when it comes to our dreams. Write this down. Number one, dreams are delayed for preparation. Write that down. Sometimes your purpose, your plan, your goal is delayed so you can be prepared better. 
Psalms 105, verse 17 to 19. Joseph, now I didn't read this, but if you go to actually go to Genesis chapter 37, verse 5 real quick. Joseph had a dream. I'm not going to go through the dream, but Joseph had actually two dreams, okay? Joseph had as a 17-year-old boy, teenager boy, the 11th son. 17-year-old boy. He actually has 11 brothers because he has a half-brother too. He has 11, 11, brother, uh, 11 brothers. He's the 11th son. He has two dreams. And basically in these two dreams in Genesis chapter 37, and you can read onward, these two dreams surround the idea that basically at one point he's going to lead the show and his whole family would come down and bow down to him. There would be some sort of subservient element that would take place where they would come and they'd bow down. They would have need of him. That he would lead them. They're all like, heck no, it's not going to happen. His brothers hated him because of these dreams. Because somewhere in their spirit, they knew they probably were right. They were good dreams. They were God dreams. It says they hated him in verse 5. Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to the dream that I had. Then he explains the dream. Now that word, if you break it down in the Hebrew, where he says Joseph had a dream, it actually means this, to be shackled or bound to the vision. When you have a dream, it's like God marries you. He binds you to the dream. You can't shake it. You can't get rid of it. So that's why it's really hard because it's haunting, right? Like you, you feel shame sometimes when you are not fulfilling the God dream in you because you know because you've been shackled to God's purpose. You can't escape God's purpose. And you know that things aren't moving forward. Things aren't functioning because you're not doing what God's called you to do. So you walk around this because you can't shake the dream because he's, he's bound it to you. He's, 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 there's a binding that takes place with his purpose to your life. You can't escape it. Genesis 37, verse 10, just even when he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream that you had? Your mother and I are going to, and your brothers are going to bow down to you before the ground before you? Like, it doesn't make sense. But his father, it says, his father kept it in mind. Once again, something's up with this Joseph guy. There's favor on Joseph. There's favor on him. Something about Joseph. But then right after this, he gets his favorite jacket torn up, gets thrown into a pit. His brothers betray him, tell his dad that he's dead. Imagine that. You're, you're excommunicated from the family. Your dad and your mom think you're dead. Your brothers are so jealous of you. Then someone finds him in a pit. He's sold into slavery. He's bought, sold into slavery. Works in a house called uh, a Potiphar's house. Work, working in a palace. Gets falsely accused. So he goes from the pit to a palace. He's, you know, he's, he's promoted from the pit. He's promoted from this dark season. He's betrayed. He's carrying the betrayal. Probably carrying some trauma. You know what I'm talking about? He's bringing trauma into his next season probably at some level. Who knows how he managed that? I don't know. But now he's working in Potiphar's house, and he gets falsely accused by Potiphar's wife of rape, which wasn't true because he was alone in the room with the opposite sex. There was no proof. There was no evidence. And so he gets put in prison. The timeline now, we're looking at about 13 years, okay? 13 years from the pit, okay? 13 years from the pit to Potiphar's house to prison. Over two of those years, roughly, were prison. So imagine, you're like running the show for a solid decade. One accusation takes you out. I don't know about you, that's scary. It takes a lifetime to build reputation, but a moment to destroy it. A moment to destroy it. Ten years, decade, potentially a decade, he's running the show in Potiphar's house. He's promoted in great leadership. And a false accusation hits him, and he's thrown in prison for over two years. But Joseph, he's a man of favor. He's a man of favor. God is with him. Somehow he handles it. Two dreams got him into this mess, and now two dreams are about to get him out of this mess. But he was been delayed this whole time because God was testing him. Now, if you go to verse 19, until the time that his word or the dreams came to pass, and Psalms 105, verse 19, the word of the Lord tested him. Remember, now he had these dreams. Now the word of the Lord is testing Joseph. Life happens, and so God uses life. He redeems life. He restores life. Life happens. He's sold as a slave. He's in a pit. And somehow he's, 
Is this building Joseph's character? Probably. He's being tested. Joseph, you're going to manage the prison one day. If you're going to manage Potiphar's house, if you're going to manage all and run all of Egypt for 14 years, if you're going to do all of that, I need to test your character. I need to build you up. I need to prepare you. So this delay, this delay of when you have the dream to when you experience the fruitfulness of that dream is all about your preparation. We want things quick. I don't know about you. We want things quick. I want things quick. Man, I, I look at I, I, my biggest struggle in asking the Lord all the time is, and I, I know God doesn't like this question because why is never a question that's answered. But sometimes I do say, and I know I'm not going to get an answer. I just say it because I'm just processing. Why have we still not got a building? It's not like we haven't been ask, asking, knocking. The only thing I come back to is he's preparing, he's preparing us constantly. He's preparing us. He's preparing us. I, I felt, and I've shared this many times with you over the last quarter since the, coming into the summer, that we had to address the sin of Achan in our house. But God doesn't want us to get a building with a minority of people financially bought in. He wants us to get a building so all of us actually experience the fruit of our own labor and investment. God wants you to eat off the tree that you planted. He doesn't want you to eat off the tree that you did not plant. You will do that in life, but as we as a body move and transition, I believe God wants a collective. God held Israel accountable and did not let them win against AI because of one man withheld from God, was disobedient to the instruction. We have an opportunity together financially. I know, and I've shared this, and I'm thankful. We have a generous house here. From 16 weeks, if you measure, from 16 weeks when we started this journey of talking about what we've been talking about since really at June, I think it was, the end of June, about addressing the sin of Achan, about withholding and being a part of this vision moving forward financially, 16 weeks to 34 or 36 weeks, if you compare the two, we've seen a 7% jump. Which is a better, more accurate way of, 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 of seeing scalability. We, we sh I shared about a six-week window where we had a 10.5%, but you can't really measure six weeks at the end of the day. You've got to measure more of a long-term trend. I'm thankful, but I want to see that jump to 70%. Because I know that if we can, we could actually find a place and manage it. But if we can't manage the collective now while we're here, in God bless Cineplex. Someone, you know, Madison said she loves Cineplex. Well, she wasn't here in any other, other, other buildings. Yeah, I love Cineplex too. At the same time, I would, I would love more a building. We've had 15 venues in eight years. It's a lot. But I just wonder if God's preparing us and there's a delay because God wants all of us to be involved in this process. I know that all of us aren't in the room this morning. What if delays are for protection as well? Part of that preparation, he's protecting you. I wonder, like, we, we almost bought a building last July. We had the first step. We had the first big chunk of, of money to, to, to make the first step. But I'm like, God, like, we don't have the second step. And what if there's a delay because God's protecting us from not getting into a place and then losing it? I don't know. I'm just proposing what if we're not ready sometimes? What if we're not ready? What if God knows that we're going to lose a battle in our next season and so God's protecting us? What if it's the protection of our promotion? What if God's not le letting you get the job you want to get or get the promotion you want to get because, because you're not ready to stay in the promotion once you get it so he's protecting you from losing a future promotion by preparing you now? What if? He's, he's delaying you. Because write this down. Write this down. Your undeveloped character will assassinate you in the season you were not meant to move into. Your undeveloped character will assassinate you in the season you were not meant to move into. In other words, when we take matters into our own hands and we move into something prematurely, if we have an undeveloped character, when we get there, that undeveloped character will assassinate us and take us out. We're our own worst enemy in those moments. 
You can say all you want about the people, the people, the things, the situations, circumstances, accusations. At the end of the day, even an accusation can't take you out of the season God's called you into if your character is right. I've been accused of all kinds of things. I'm still standing. You know that song? I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, There was a guy that went on a podcast in 2020, won, and came on the podcast, big podcaster, and said, mark my words, Sean Gaby will fall in 2021. I was going to say, I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like, by the grace of God, I want to get too... Yo, by the grace of God, I'm standing. Don't let your undeveloped character assassinate you in a season you were not meant to move into. Amen? Number two, write this down. What if you're delayed? What if you're delayed for people? What if there are some people in your life that need you to stay what you feel as stuck in one season? Because they need you in that season. Because I don't know about you, but Joseph, I don't know how long Joseph was in prison before these two people came into prison. Two of the king's servants came into prison. A cupbearer and a bread maker. Which is a whole different revelation. And interesting that it was bread and wine. We can talk about that another day. But a cupbearer and a bread maker. The cupbearer would drink the cup for the king on behalf of the king, so the king wouldn't die in case it was poisoned, right? They had a very, 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 very selfless job. You know who our cupbearer is? Jesus Christ. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said to God the Father, I can't drink this cup of suffering, but not my will, but your will be done. When he died on a cross, he drank the the hardest cup to drink. He was the cupbearer for all humanity. He drank the poison so you could be set free from future poison. He drank sin so you could be free and liberated from sin. This is the gospel message. Jesus died on a cross and took the cup that you could never drink on your own, by your own merit. He did it all for you. That's why on the cross, his last words were, it is finished. What was he saying? I drank the cup that you could never drink to free you of the poison that you could never manage. It's called sin. It's called death. I've set you free from sin and death. You have eternity with me. This is the gospel. But then he didn't just die. He rose again. He was raised into life so you could be raised to new life. He's the only prophet that said he was God. He was the only person that was in the image of God. The exact, Hebrew says, representation of God. The only one to claim to be God and die as us even though he was also God. God in the flesh. He was the only one that resurrected. Everyone else died. He was the only one that resurrected. It's, it's, it's the defining line between every other world religion and Jesus. But Jesus is like, I don't even want religion. I want a relationship with you. I came to disrupt religion. That's why the Jews crucified me. I came to disrupt the order. I was a Jew. Jesus was a Jew. But he came to disrupt it. He was the new way, the better way. The old was good, but the new was going to be even better. And he was that new way. He came to disrupt and flip the whole thing on its head to introduce a new way. That now you no longer find life through obeying a law. You find life through me. By receiving me. These two people, they came into prison. You guys okay? Ooh, I'm getting late here. I don't know how long he was in prison. Two people come in, sent to prison. He's in prison. And they say, we had these dreams last night. They woke up depressed. Joseph's like, man, what's going on, guys? Like, We had these dreams. We don't have nobody to interpret them. And Joseph's like, do not all interpretations belong to God? Bring it to me. He was a dreamer, right? Joseph was a dreamer. What better place to have a dream than to be, have a dream in a prison with a dreamer? where actually the dreamer who had the dreams that's going to interpret the dreams came into prison because of a dream. Like dreams got me in this mess. Somehow they'll get me out of this mess. So just tell me your dreams. He tells them the dreams. Basically, I'm not going to go through all the stories. It's a whole, I have a whole 
series on dream interpretation and dream language. We talk about this, but yet these two people have these dreams, and basically he says to the, the bread maker, well, you're going to die. That's going to suck for you. This is what your dream means. But the cupbearer, you're going to be restored and redeemed back to your rightful place as cupbearer. He's like, and remember me when you get there. Remember that I was the guy that told you what's going to happen to you. As he said, the bread maker died, had his head cut off, posted against the, a tree, and the, the cupbearer survived. And it wasn't for two years, two more years passed until one day now Pharaoh, the big dog, has two dreams. See the pattern here? Joseph has two dreams. He's in jail. There's two guys that have two dreams. Now, two years later, after he's been in prison for over two years, Pharaoh, the big dog, has two dreams that he doesn't understand. And nobody can give him interpretation. And the cupbearer was like, I know a guy. I know a guy who interpreted my dream and my buddy's dream who you killed. <laughs> I know a guy and he can interpret your dreams. I say all that to say is that what if the delay for Joseph was to be there for the people so that he could find purpose and be promoted in one next season? Your delays are not just for you. We see this in Mark chapter 4. It meant when they all went into the boat. Remember the storm? I'm almost done, okay? Talk with me for a second. They went into the storm to cross over the other side. Jesus was in their boat. The disciples were in the boat with Jesus, and the storm came, filling the boat. They were freaking out. They're going to die. They're like, don't you care that we're perishing? And it says in the Scripture, and all of the other little boats were with him. But nobody ever talks about the little boats that were watching around there. We don't know if they died, they capsized. We don't know what happened. But the other little boats were there watching. Why? Because your breakthrough is not just about you all the time. It's about other people that are watching. You becoming the better version of you is not just about you. It's about people around you that are inspired by you, that need to be led by you, that need a model to follow. And so sometimes your delay or your storm or your struggle is not just about you. It's about your kids watching how you navigate those things. It's about your friends. It's about your coworkers, about the people. Man, we have tough, tough seasons. I just know people are always watching. Always watching. Number three, write this down. Last point, we're done. Number three, we're delayed ultimately for purpose. Ultimately for purpose. Psalms 105, 105 verse 20 to 22. There came a time two years later after he sets them free, or after, after these, these two prisoners are set free, he's still in jail. He's managing the jail. He becomes a steward of the jail. The king finally sent to him because he knew that there was an interpreter of dreams in jail and he needed him and he sent to him and released him. Of course the story goes he, and the psalmist here doesn't refer to this but if you read it in Genesis you read the whole, by the way the story of Joseph is one of the longest stories written in all of scripture like as far as like text used in, in the canon it's one of the longest most addressed stories in all of scripture. Read the story of Joseph, not Mary's Joseph the story of Joseph in Genesis. The king releases him. Joseph interprets the Pharaoh's dreams, and you can read about the dreams in Genesis chapter 41. The king releases him. The ruler of the people let him go free. Verse 21, he made him now lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to basically lead his leaders, to teach wisdom to the elders now all of a sudden he's in the jail like he's been through it all he's been in a pit he's been betrayed by his brothers now he's in the palace now he gets falsely accused thrown in jail now he's elevated back to a place of even higher leadership not with potiphar but with the pharaoh and now he's in charge of all of egypt because of a dream interpretation wild isn't it eh? and we wonder Oh, yeah, don't pay attention to your dreams. You know, like, no, <laughs> pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to your dreams. Because of a dream, all this went down. Because God was instructing him. God had a plan. He was delayed for great purpose. All this, you know how long this was? At this juncture, we're overcoming into the 13th year. There's seven years 
of, of plenty. This is part of the dream that Pharaoh had seven years of abundance and then seven years of famine. And about two years into the famine part, which was about 23 years after he had the dream, you know what happens to Joseph? His dream as a 17-year-old boy is manifest right in front of him. And his whole family comes and bows down to him, just like in the dream, asking for help from Joseph. Twenty Over 23 years later. I don't know about you, I don't want to wait 23 years for my dreams. But the redemption in this story is so wildly mind-blowing. And all of these delays for Joseph had a purpose. There was preparation. There was protection. I want you to stand up for a second. And I want you just to, as we close, I want you to think about some of the areas in your own life that you have felt delayed in. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your relationship. Maybe it's the pursuit of a relationship that you don't have yet. Maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's your parenting. Maybe it's your career. I don't know what it is for you. There's something that's been delayed in your life. And let me just tell you, let me give you a promise if you can hear me this morning. There is a purpose within that delay. There is preparation within that delay. There is power and potential and protection within that delay. God is doing something in you that maybe you don't realize he's doing. Jesus has a dream for your life. And ultimately that dream, just is, I, I, it's simple. I don't want you to think about it like in the realm of like career or the realm of the doing of your life, what you do. His greatest dream for you is just to have relationship with you. And maybe there's been a delay even getting here to a place where you're even open to God in your life. You're even open to the person of Jesus actually being the lead dog in your life. Maybe, maybe it's, there's been a delay to get to this place, but I just believe it's a divine setup. I believe you're here for a reason. You're here for a purpose. You live in this timeline in 2023. You, there's great potential for you, in you, around you. So with every, just close your eyes just for a few moments as we transition here. Just close your eyes. I know that the Holy Spirit, I know the power of God is working on you right now. Some of you, you're like, you have no idea why you're even here. You have no idea what's taking place, but you feel something right now. You feel something that you cannot describe. You feel different. Even as I was talking, you could feel like a presence in the room. You could feel like a joy. You could feel a strength hitting you. You could feel like your mind, like, illuminated. It's because the Holy Spirit is preparing you. He's putting seeds on the inside of you. He's waking you up. He's strengthening you this morning. He's enlightening you. He's giving you what you need for the next season of your life. He's giving you the energy, the boldness, perspective that maybe you do not have yet. But the first step and the most important step is to simply say, yes, I'm all in. Jesus died on a cross. Even as a man who never sinned, he became sin for us. He became, he took on all of the junk that would ever be in our lives. He took on your addiction. He took on your suicide. He took on your struggle. He took on your sexual uh, addiction. He took on your alcoholism. He took on all of it. He took on all the th things that would destroy your life. He took it all in his body in one moment on a cross. Took all of it in. All of it in. All the trauma. All the pain. All the disease. All the sickness that would ever come and attack you. He took all of it in in his body in one moment on a cross. And when he said it is finished on the cross and he breathed his last breath what he said was that first step now for all humanity being restored redeemed and healed has been established and in his resurrection you are given the opportunity to find new life because after you deal with some stuff after that stuff gets dealt with now the next step is to move through and into a new season of new life and that's what the resurrection is all about and if you're in this room right now just with every eye closed just for a few moments and you've never made that decision to say hey I'm all in I want Jesus to be the driver of my life I want him to be the one who leads my life the king of my life the leader of my life this is your opportunity 
Romans chapter 10 says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is God, He is Lord, He is big capital G God, not small G God, big capital G God, and if you believe in your heart that He was raised from the dead on the third day, you will be saved. It's simply a starting point saying, I'm all in. I believe. I believe. I believe. I'm open. God, Holy Spirit, Jesus, like, like, come, like, like, speak to me. Like, come into my life. Lead my life. I receive your forgiveness today. I acknowledge that you've done what you said you did on the cross over 2,000 years ago and you resurrected to give me new life today. I receive that. If that's you, I want you just to say in your heart, say yes. Today is the beginning of that journey. Today is the beginning of that journey for me. I'm all in. I'm going to walk this walk. It's going to feel narrow. It's going to feel hard. But I got someone with me on the journey in this next season of my life. If we can just pray as we close. I know we're way over time this morning. If you feel comfortable, just lift your hands in this room right now. Just as an invitation. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We're going to agree in the Spirit. We thank you for the delays. Can you thank Him right now? Thank, you for the, thank Him for the delays. All the delays that have protected us, prepared us, positioned us, promoted us, gave us purpose empowered us, 